today's video, we're going to be showing you guys why we potentially think this upcoming hurricane season could be quite active. We're going to also, on the contrary, be talking about some reasons why it might not be. Uh, so we're going to be really comparing and contrasting. So it's going to be very interesting to take a look at this with you guys. We did upload our uh, kind of official hurricane season forecast, our first one a few days ago. We're going to be cross-referencing that today, showing you guys a lot from that. If you want to see a deeper dive into it, you can check that video out. But like I said, we're going to be showing you guys what's in that video anyway today. So you don't have to. Uh, we're going to be going over everything today. I think the most important things to talk about here on the global sea surface temperature view uh, is mostly going to be uh, first off, the El Nino that we anticipate to really, really take hold by the time we're taking a look at the hurricane season. So that's going to be this warming area in here is certainly what we're taking a look at here. But not only that, our negative PDO, if this transitions to a positive PDO or if it stays a negative, big, big question marks with that one. Uh, we're certainly going to need to really uh, look closely at this because typically um, – in an El Nino, you might see a positive PDO up here, but we're not seeing that here. So I am curious to see how this kind of translates. Um, but let's take a look real quickly at our actually just North American view. So this is, or North Atlantic better yet. This is going to give us a much better look uh, into what we're expecting for the Atlantic hurricane season here. And I think there's a few takeaways for sure. There's some cooler conditions overall for our MDR. As you can see, that stands for Main Development Region. Oftentimes, let's, this is the most like traditional hurricane track you can possibly imagine, but it does something like this. Uh, now, what it does from there, whether it goes out to sea, you know, goes near the East Coast, it's Florida, hits the Gulf, goes into the Gulf, hits, you know, the Gulf Coast, goes into the Gulf, breaks up. It can do anything from that point. I hope you get, I hope you understand that. But oftentimes, the, the very foundation of these storms is through this main development region. And if this is colder... That is a very good sign that we might have less activity taking place in here. I think this is a good time to show you guys our different regions that we need to take a look at here. So we have our MDR here. Again, stands for Main Development Region. Our OTS region here, which is out to sea. From the MDR, it might move into the Southern Caribbean. The Southern Caribbean, fun fact, happens to be a little bit more... Uh, aerated so it's a little bit more like a desert so these storms tend to not do good at all down here this is an area that really dries up the storms and honestly it's called a hurricane graveyard because these storms typically come to an end if they move into this area now if they move into the northern caribbean uh, they tend to do quite well as this is a very tropical region as long as they don't hit dominican republic and haiti uh, that is the main thing in Puerto Rico because those mountains really tear up the, the storms, even Cuba at times. But Cuba is a lot more flat than the other countries I mentioned. Uh, these areas are right in the way of these storms. Uh, if these areas weren't here, you would not believe how many worse hurricanes we would have seen through history hit the United States. Uh, these areas are, unfortunately for them, just guardians for the rest of North America and Central America because oftentimes they take the blow for everybody. Um now, if they move north or south of these islands, these storms tend to do better than it going straight over them. So that is something to think about. That is our Caribbean region. East coast here can either be kind of out to sea or hitting the east coast. And then Gulf of Mexico is obviously the Gulf of Mexico. Now, for a La Nina, this is what we expect. Uh, or actually, we need to take a look at El Nino, which I don't have here today. So we're not going to talk about this. But in the opposite of what we're seeing, let's just say it this way. A La Nina, we see decreased shear. We're not going to see a La Nina, so we're not going to see decreased shear. In an El Nino, we see the opposite. So in a, uh, here, let's do this. In an El Nino, this is very unprofessional. El Nino, we see, um, we see increased, there we go, increased shear for these areas in an El Nino. And in these El Nino events, that really hinders storms developing, especially uh, near the equator. More, you know, it's a little north of the equator, but closer to the equator. Uh, we see a lot more of this shear as a result of the El Nino taking place. So that is going to be something we're definitely watching through the season as another factor why we could see decreased activity this hurricane season. Now, as we take a look at the uh, temperatures, though, we can see that we have more below normal or neutral throughout a lot of our MDR. Uh, but south of there, we have warmth. This isn't going to really matter because we don't see tropical activity down here usually. Um, usually it's north of this area. 
But for our areas in not only a lot of the North Atlantic, our out to sea region is going to be warmer, which means if some systems do move into this area, we could see some activity for sure prevail through here. But not only that, as you work your way closer to the Gulf Coast, the Caribbean and the East Coast here, so these areas here, we can see even further above normal sea surface temperatures. And what this could mean is if we do see storms begin in these areas, like let's say we see a system develop here and then rapidly intensify, it's going to have ample conditions to really, really develop rapidly into a very intense system. And that is going to be something we're really concerned about and something we're really watching for. Same story off the East Coast. Sometimes we see the storm start here and develop quite nicely. Uh, so we need to really watch this closely, especially over the Caribbean, as they'll have even longer to track. This is going to be an area that I expect to be extremely favorable for tropical activity as we move into the upcoming uh, hurricane season. I'm going to be watching this area really, really closely. So if you tune in with us daily as we do upload every single day and you subscribe, we will be covering all of these things before they even happen. Now, our favorability forecasts, I guess is what I'm going to call it. We expect less favorable overall due to the El Nino and the shear, the below average sea surface temperatures. Overall, our main development region all the way through the Southern Caribbean is where we expect less favorable overall conditions to really, really be the big story here. Uh, so we're going to be watching closely for that. We could see less systems moving in from this typical area, but the homegrown systems, which is going to be everywhere in here, we expect much more favorable conditions. That is especially for the Bahamas, areas near Cuba, the Gulf of Mexico, and areas offshore of the East Coast, as you can see. If we see homegrown systems for a lot of these areas, that is going to be the really uh, worst case scenario. Again, up the East Coast, uh, areas south of Cuba might have these developing heading into the Gulf, or they might just start out in the Gulf. We see this oftentimes too. These are all going to be things we need to watch during this entire hurricane season upcoming. These are my takeaways, and I think this is what everybody should be thinking about, really. As we take a look at our overall forecast, this is where I kind of just put it into words what I'm expecting. Uh, overall, I don't think it's a surprise here that for our main development region, we expect less invest in tropical cyclones overall. That also means that things are going to be hindered as far as development. We're going to see less development into tropical storms, hurricanes, etc. Uh, but not only that, as a result, we're going to see less storms move into kind of this out to sea region. As you can see near Bermuda uh, and other surrounding areas, we expect less of these to move in because they usually these storms that move into these areas originate from this main development region and then move up. So if we have less storms originating here, that obviously means less overall storms for this out to sea region. Now, above average development for the Caribbean is, all, is what we expect for this green area. And that is going to overall, in, I know I've said that a lot here, but that's going to increase the chance here for the East Coast and the Gulf Coast in general, because those areas are all going to be seeing storms coming from the Caribbean, but also homegrown systems of their own developing in these individual areas with development so ripe. The temperatures are going to be perfect. Uh, conditions are going to be super ripe in these areas. But not only that, we could have these systems developing in the Caribbean too, developing and moving into these areas. So overall, it is not the most, you know, active looking hurricane season I've ever seen. Uh, not even close. But I do think that things look more favorable closer to the United States. They look less favorable the further away. And I think when you take a look at the numbers, this is a very early projection. But I expect near normal numbers as far as how many tropical storms hurricanes and major hurricanes we see. I just think that all of those storms that do develop will be a lot closer to the United States than average. And that is something to be concerned about and obviously be thinking about. Um, but I think the numbers at the end of the day will look quite average, not below, not above, very close to average. That is what I'm thinking. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to also like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.